It's always, when I was growing up as a kid, it was always one of them, oh, I need to go to America to watch these fights. I need to go to Madison Square Garden or out to Las Vegas to go and catch something. And for me, there's still something magical about that. Whenever the call comes and we've got a fight at MSG or we've got a fight at the T-Mobile now or anything else that's out in Las Vegas, I get extremely excited about it. But it does seem that the new destination, especially for big time, top class matchmaking in the world of boxing, it does seem like it's going to be Saudi Arabia for some time. It does at the moment. Um, boxing goes in cycles, as we know, um, from fighters to fight places. And you're right, so much uh, has been in America for, for so long and, and, and different parts as well. But uh, yeah, Madison Square Garden for me, the Mecca, and then there's the MGM and Mandalay Bay, the Golden Tower, and plenty of, uh, of amazing nights in Vegas. Um, there's been big nights in Germany um, with the Klitschko's when they, they reigned there. There was a, a wonderful time with with German boxing as well. And there's been some fantastic times, obviously, in Britain. And uh, I think none better, really, than I was with George earlier, obviously reminiscing about 10 years ago and the, and the Frotch Grove story and, and what happened after that. Is that it, 10 years old? 10 Jeez. years, a decade, isn't it unbelievable? And, and you've had then the likes of the, the, the crawlers and the bellies and the haze and, and all that coming through and some, some really great nights and, and, and fights and not just arenas packed, but stadiums packed you know Joshua taking Wembley over but then those those nights in Cardiff yeah. as well so, so some fantastic um, moments in Britain um, and now yes absolutely the Saudis are, are, are putting the fights on they're uh, they're throwing the money at it and they they want Saudi Arabia uh, recognized and um, you know I've been there many times uh, the first time we went over with Sky was for AJ against Andy Ruiz in the uh, in the rematch and it was a, a very different place Riyadh then um, we went to Jeddah for, for AJ Usyk too and then obviously I've been to Riyadh uh, several times in this period um, and there is real change um, it's fantastic to see to see Sky and Raven um, great ambassadors for, 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 for boxing and and the women's sport, which I'm, I'm so, so dear to my heart. And, and we spent a lot of time at Sky with Eddie and everybody building that. Um, fantastic to see the, the first women's uh, fight out there. Um, and, and, it, and it will lead to many more. And I think this is, uh, this is a great time for, for boxing because the Saudis are really invested in it. And, um, and yes, obviously, they've got the football and they've got the PFL and they've got the, uh, the, uh, the golf and, 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 and other sports. But it seems like Turkey's got this passion for boxing. We heard about it. We talked about Mark Chamberlain as his favourite fighter. And just, you know, looking at when we talk to Spencer Brown and George Warren, they say, Turkey, you know, he's making these fights. He knows about them. He, he's studied Johnny Fisher. You know, he knows that he knows the sport. And to have someone with that sort of power and, and, and magnitude over there invested in our sport, we go with it and the promoters are going with it and the most important thing for me Adam is that the fighters are getting paid the most money for putting their lives their careers on the line each and every time and the fans are getting these fights and while that's happening long may it continue absolutely how do you think that affects then the other promoters around the world and their attitudes to stuff because as you just rightfully said Fans now have an expectation level. Oh, hang on a minute. We're seeing what we actually want to see. So therefore, there now becomes a new expectation level, not just necessarily on Riyadh season, but around the world of certain things coming into fruition. Okay, we're not talking Riyadh season level cards, but absolutely from a competition point of view, we want to see more British title fights, don't we? We want to see more area title fights, more English title fights on these local cards here in the UK. And it's exactly what we're trying to do at GBM. We, we're putting on these shows where we don't have as much money, we don't have the, the, the pockets, but we have the passion and the and the commitment to, to fighters from around the country to put on good matches and, and get great great audiences and, and, and that's what's happening. It's also happening with Top Tier and many other uh, promoters around the country as well who haven't got on that Saudi stage yet. You've got the Wasserman team as well, but Kale Nissa and Ben, they're all sort of get dipping their toes into it. Now you're seeing Golden Boy Top Rank involved in this one as well and, and that November card mm. for Oscar De La Hoya. So, so everyone's trying to sort of get in there They've come to LA, they've come to Wembley as well, very clever. But also there is pressure um, on the States. There is pressure on Britain. You know, we do want fights here. Uh, and we've had them this year with, with, with Fraser and, and, and Fabio, the first one. And we've had it with Joe Joyce and Derek Chisora. We've had it with Johnny at the Copper Box with, with his thousands. And, and so 
So those nights have to still continue. It's very important to have big nights in Britain because I've seen it, leisure centres, where we had seven, eight hundred, nine hundred people going to arenas, going to stadiums. We don't want it to fall away. So we want these big fights and the fighters getting those paydays in Saudi. But we also want to have bigger nights here because the inspiration that you're getting from seeing the best, the kids want to get in the gyms and yeah. they are getting in the gyms they've got to have the grounding they've got to have the you know the the the, the, the slow foundation building i was talking to um kyle davis's trainer earlier joe um who's he's a fantastic guy and, and and we're trying with kyle to do to do it slowly to take him the sort of the small hall route and do it area english british title yeah. and you see ben whitaker who of course has got the stardust and he's got the excitement and the charisma and he's he's you know he's he's a world-class fighter and he's shown that in the amateurs and we at sky were like right we've got a possible pay-per-view star let's get him in let's sort of rush him and 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 he's been sort of sort of took taken very quickly through and, and as we saw tonight you know it's it's difficult when when mm. you're you're the favorite all the time and, and there's a lot of heat on you and and it's it's very difficult to get that right about sort of building a fighter and and whether you should take it slowly or whether you have to with social media and and, and the chances now in saudi to go quick but we mustn't forget the sort of grassroots and the foundations here it's really important for for fight fans to have that as well as the, uh, the, those big cards in Saudi or America. For, from a fighter point of view, obviously you're now going to experience one of these Rio cards in your in your next fight, Johnny. You seem to have always been one of those that fully understands about profile building, audience building, the, the whole package that comes with trying to obviously make a living in this sport. Talk to me about your your thought processes about being involved in a in a Riyadh season card and everything that's been going on has kind of been going on with you not involved, but now you're involved and you're there. Talk to me about your head head process with that. Well, first of all, the, the big draw for it this yes the Riyadh cards are amazing, but it's the fact that I can fight on the Fury Usyk undercard. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk historically will go down in history as one of the biggest fights, especially after how good the first one was. I really enjoyed that, but. It's an opportunity I just can't turn down. You talk about the money and that side of it, that comes into it. We're trying to make a livelihood for ourselves. As you say about GBM Sports, other small hall shows, I know plenty of fighters who are paying to fight, who are who are, who are just making enough, or there's, they're, they're just making enough to live and survive. You want to come out of this game and you want to be able to pay off your mortgage on a house. It's not just yeah. about the dream of winning belts. It's of a course, business, it? it's a career. It's a business, and you've got to be able to pay your mortgage off. You've got, you want to go and give a bit to your mum and dad when you're finished. You want to try and have a, make this a life, a livelihood, rather than just something you do as a hobby and see how far it goes. So when these cars come along for the fighters, that's the main thing. We can all go there and get paid handsomely above what we normally get paid. Give me, right, don't give me an exact figure because it's rude of me to ask you this, but just for people listening at home, right, yeah. if you and Dave Allen was to take place in London, give me the percentage increase, do you think, on Dave, you and Dave Allen taking place in Riyadh, for you personally, from a, from a money point it's of view? It's over double what I'd normally get. That's unbelievable. So... For me and Dave Allen, who listen, I'm I'm, I'm still in the early earliest stages of, of my career, and the money that I'm going to get for this is something. If you asked me four or five years ago when I sparred Dave Allen for the first time, whether I could earn a penny from boxing, it's unbelievable. And I'm not saying it's an absolute fortune that you can retire on, but it's a substantial amount that can't be sniffed at. It'd be, it'd be rude to turn it down, you know. So you've got to think about these things. And kind of like what we were alluding to before with Fabio Wardley, Fabio got an opportunity on the Tyson Fury Francis Ngannou card to take on David Adelaide and he stops David Adelaide yeah. and obviously that he then has navigated a few different promotional things and what have you tonight he finds himself back out in Saudi Arabia and he's put in yeah. a first round knockout performance in the heavyweight division he's going to get another opportunity and earn even more dog coming that's forward what that's what and at the end of the day that's what it's about for, but, for but that's what I mean you're now in that conversation yeah. of right I'm on yeah. a Riyad card everybody's going to be watching because it's Fury if I put in a great performance and I'm on for even it, an even bigger bit of bumps and that's the that's the that's the bottom line of it this is our this is our livelihood we want to put on great shows i love fighting in england and i will be coming back and fighting in england as much as i can as well having that show at the copper box the grassroots of boxing as well i'm not one of these people who's going to get carried away in my head boxing and the grassroots and what it means to not only the money but build up legacy and build up things for people in the sport youngsters who come through people that go to should go to boxing gyms because I think there's still an attitude in this country that we shouldn't send youngsters to boxing gyms. No. 
boxing gyms are the lifeblood they of many communities. Lives, they they save, save lives. lives. And people in the educational system, and I've been a big part of that. I went to uh, university. I studied history. I was head boy at my school. Schools have got to get behind boxing clubs and they've got to involve boxing in schools because it has changed people's lives and I've seen it happen for people. Take Fo that 30 seconds, talk sport, and play that over and over again yeah. over the coming weeks. Well Fo said, Johnny Fisher. Thank Focus, you. discipline, I tell you what, you can learn a lot out of this game. It's not about becoming a professional, it's about changing lives and as Johnny's just said, it's absolutely bang on then. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.